Hey guys, I'm back and I've changed my name to Lemony Snicket because I've had a series of very unfortunate events. But before I tell you about that, I want to show you some good things about my last week stay at the Maverick Campground in Cimarron Canyon State Park in New Mexico. That's where things started to go wrong, but I did enjoy my walks around the lake and the river. So watch that first, Piglet. Be quiet. <laughs> watch that first, and I'll be back to tell you the gory details of the unfortunate events. See you in a bit. In my last video, I left you as I was arriving at the Maverick Campground in Cimarron Canyon State Park in New Mexico. And as I was backing into my spot there, I spied that cute little teardrop trailer. So after I got parked, I went across and introduced myself to the guy. It was a man and his son that were staying there. And he informed me that he built that little teardrop trailer. Well, I tried to get him to give us a tour, but he did not want to be on camera. So unfortunately, I couldn't show you any of it, but it was really cute. Why are you bugging me? Are you hungry? It's kind of too early to eat. We're in a new time zone, so it's really an hour earlier. And you don't have any clothes on. You are, you're pretty much naked. You can't go outside like that. Okay, we'll put your harness on, and then you will be fully clothed.
The last couple of days at the Maverick Campground, I started feeling kind of sick. And I have reservations at Blue Water Lake State Park in near Grants, New Mexico, which was on the way back to Arizona, which I had planned on coming back to Arizona, uh, which is, I am here now in Arizona. I'm actually at the alpaca farm. But the unfortunate event kind of started when I was on my way to Blue Water Lake State Park. I had to stay in Albuquerque for the night and it was 93 degrees, something like that. So it was way too hot to stay at a Cracker Barrel. Um, I don't run my generator when I stay at places like that. So I had tried to make reservations at an RV park in Albuquerque, but every time I tried to call, they either did not answer the phone or they answered and put me on hold and never came back. So I finally gave up on that and I decided I'll just stay in a hotel. So I usually stay at the Residence Inn off of I-25. There's a P.F. Chang's restaurant right across the street, which makes it very convenient. And the first weird thing that happened was they tried to charge me a pet fee of $100 for a piglet just for one night. They have never charged me a pet fee before. I've stayed there several times. I come to find out that the guy was new, so he um, gladly waived the pet fee. <laughs> And uh, I thought everything would be fine. I uh, went across the street and ate dinner at P.F. Chang's. And that was probably the worst meal I have ever had at P.F. Chang's. It was so salty, I could barely eat it. Well, when I got back to my hotel room, about 20 minutes after I got back to my hotel room, the power went out. And it was out for two or three hours. I'm not really sure. Um, but all I know is that I was fast asleep and all of a sudden everything came on. The lights came on, the television came on. It woke me up out of a dead sleep. So I did not sleep very well. I, I don't like not sleeping in my van. My van bed is pretty comfortable and I just could not get comfortable in that hotel room. But I was there um, to wash clothes also. So the next morning I got all my laundry out of the van and I took it in. I think I filled up two or three washers full of stuff. And then come to find out that none of the dryers worked because of the power outage the night before. So I could not dry my clothes. <laughs> so I had to put all my wet clothes in my duffel bag and I had just planned on stopping at a laundromat that I had been to before in Grants uh, when I stayed at the Blue Water Lake before. Um, I, I went to that laundromat several times. So when I got to the laundromat, <laughs> there was a sign in the door that said, you cannot dry your clothes here unless you wash them here. And I thought, ah, they must have a lot of people that live locally that have a washer but no dryer and they try to wash their clothes. This is also the place, I think I may have mentioned before, that um, they have free uh, clothes drying uh, during the week, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I think they, you have to pay. This was a Saturday, so I expected to have to pay anyway. So I went and talked to the attendant and asked him if I could dry my clothes. And <laughs> He was very sarcastic. He let me do it, but he kept making snide comments. And I, I just gave him a really weird look, like, why are you acting like this? And so anyway, I dried my clothes. And when I was folding my clothes up, the guy walked by and he apologized for whatever it was for, for saying all that. I still don't know his reasoning for saying that. Um, so anyway, that was... That was like a pretty weird thing that happened. So anyway, um, I usually get propane in Grants, but it was a Saturday and there, I got there too late, so they were, they were closed. And uh, 
they're not open on Sunday. So I went ahead and went to Blue Water. I think I, I was pretty sure I had enough propane to last a couple more days. So by the time I got to Blue Water and put, got into my spa, I was feeling pretty bad. So the next couple of days, I don't, I don't, I don't think I really got out of bed much. I, um, you know, took the trash out and did my chores as usual, but I just did not feel good. So I just laid in bed and watched television. Then I started to run out of propane, so I had to pack up and go back to Grants. And I went to Ortega's to get propane, and they filled most of the way up. There, there was something wrong with their pump, and it would not fill my tank the whole way up. I think they filled it up to about 81%. But after I paid for my gas and was getting ready to leave, I uh, was parked really close to, to the edge of the fence, and I probably should have backed up first and then kind of swung around to get out the fence, but I thought I could squeeze through there because I had done it the time before when I went. And as far as I could tell in my side mirrors, I, I was not touching the fence, but uh, the van would not go. So I thought, I must be caught on something. So I backed the van up and realized that there was a, a part of the chain link fence was sticking out down at the bottom and I could not see it was digging into the running board on my van on the, pet, on the driver's side. And then the, so I put a huge gouge in the fiberglass of my running board. And like any self-respecting a solo female full-time RVer, I fixed it with duct tape. I plan on getting it fixed eventually, but for now, the duct tape works fine. So that was one of the really unfortunate events. Um, I'm not sure if I can count the feeling sick as an event, but anyway, it definitely affected my travels. So I went back and I had reservations through that Saturday, um, and so Saturday I packed up and I headed back to um, Snowflake, Arizona to the alpaca farm here. And when I got here, it was like 90 something degrees. And so I went to turn the generator on so I could run the air conditioner and the generator <laughs> wouldn't start. Not even a click. It didn't even try to turn over. Nothing. It was like all of a sudden it just stopped working. So I uh, spent a pretty miserable night with no air conditioning. Um, luckily the next day I had reservations at an RV park in Sholo where I could hook up. And by then I was starting to feel really, really, really bad. So I was at the RV park probably two nights and I woke up in the middle of the night and my tongue was swollen and my glands were swollen and I thought it was like two o'clock in the morning and I thought oh my god I should probably go to an emergency room but the thought of having to unhook everything and pack everything up so that I could drive the van just to go to the emergency room didn't sound very appealing to me so I just suffered through the rest of the night and the next day my tooth was hurting really bad so I finally came to the conclusion that I probably had an abscess tooth and that's what has been making me sick and what made my tongue swell up and my glands swell up so I called the dentist in Sholo and I made a reservation for the next day. Um, they said they don't do emergency <laughs> um, dental work, but they went ahead and let me come in anyway. So uh, when I told them about my tongue swelling up and my glands swelling up, they kind of scolded me and told me 
if that ever happens again, you go straight to the emergency room. So I'm glad I didn't die in my sleep, which I guess I probably could have. It could have blocked my air passages, but it didn't. And, and it, it went away the next day. That by the afternoon, it was pretty much all the way gone down. Um, so I went to the dentist the next day and they did an emergency tooth extraction and gave me some antibiotics and uh, I started feeling better probably two days after that and finally was able to take a shower. <laughs> it had been like 10 days since I'd had a shower. I hadn't washed clothes in like two and a half weeks. so. I finally felt good enough to go to the laundry and, and wash my clothes. And thankfully I was, at, you know, hooked up to power and all that because my generator still would not start. So finally, yesterday, uh, I had to check out of the RV park this morning, but yesterday I took my van into the RV repair shop there in Sholo um, to get, get the generator checked out. And it turns out that um, it wouldn't start because the oil level was too low. And I did not know anything about generator maintenance. I didn't know that you had to change the spark plugs. Just like an engine, you have to change the spark plugs and, and air filter and, you know, keep the change the oil and all that good stuff. So, anyway, they had to order parts there for the air filter and the spark plugs. But, uh, they uh, went ahead and changed the oil. So today I was able to run my uh, generator for the first time in two weeks and run the air conditioner. But as you can see, I have the back doors open now. It's cooled down enough. It's been kind of sprinkling. So um, it's still hot in here, but it's tolerable. And I, I don't really want to run the generator until I get the rest of the maintenance done. So I have to take it back next week to get that done. So, um, you know, I would have thought that getting the antibiotics and clearing up that infection uh, was the end of all my woes, but the dentist's office gave me a little package, you know, with a free toothbrush and toothpaste and a, a pen and a little thing of lip balm. So, about four days, five days after I had the tooth extracted, I got that lip balm out and put it all over my lips. And I woke up the next morning <laughs> looking like this. And throughout the day, the swelling on my mouth kind of moved around. And by the end of the day, I looked like American Dad or Popeye or something. My jaws were so swollen up. And unlike the swollen tongue and the swollen glands, it didn't go away the next day. It took two days, three days maybe even to completely go away. And I honestly, I think my jaws might still be a little bit swollen. Anyway, it was an allergic reaction to the lip balm. Nothing to do with the tooth, thank goodness. But anyway, I have never had so many weird, strange things happen to me in my travels, I, like all within, within such a short period of time that I'm blaming it on the Mercury retrograde. <laughs> I don't believe in astrology usually. I mean, I, I'll read my, my astrology if I see it written somewhere just for kicks, but you know, I never put any uh, belief into it. Um, but I have no other explanation as to why all these weird things have been happening to me other than that. So Mercury retrograde, if, you don't, if you're not familiar with it, it affects communications between you and other people. It affects uh, devices such as cell phones, generators, <laughs> and it affects and delays travel. So, I consider being sick from my tooth as a delay in my travels. So, I'm blaming everything that happened to me on the Mercury retrograde. 
So let me know what you think about that. Okay. I, I hope nothing else bad happens. Mercury retrograde doesn't end until August 25th. And today is August the 10th. So I went ahead and made reservations at, at, a, at a state campground with full hookups for the rest of the week starting tomorrow. And then I have two more weeks back at the RV park that I was at that I just checked out of this morning. I just want to make sure that the Mercury retrograde is over and out of the way before I start my travels again. <laughs> Don't laugh. You probably do the same thing. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, and I appreciate all of you, and I hope, uh, I don't know, I think it's kind of funny now that it's almost over with, but I better not jinx myself. <laughs> we'll see you next video. Bye.